So, um, it's a pleasure to be here uh, again, and thank you very much for the invitation. So, what I'd like to explain is um, that uh, a infinity algebra uh, may be used, um, I mean, they, they, they appear in classical intersection theory for, for algebraic varieties of a field. So, So I start uh, by recalling some, I mean, um, um, some uh, basic things about intersection theory. So the main point is, uh, so I fix a field, and uh, given x, which is a separate case scheme of finite type. So basic object is the the two groups. So I will always assume that uh, all the irreducible components have the same dimension. So I'll just uh, always use uh, co-dimension uh, indexing for for Cho groups. So it's the uh, quotient of the free abelian groups generated by the uh, integral closed subscheme. Of codimension uh, p, and to do intersection theory, we have to model out by killing some some um, algebraic cycles. So we, we it's uh, called the rational equivalent, and the main point is the construction of a, of a product on these uh, graded groups. So product on c h star of x. So usually to do this, there are two, uh, two ways. So either you use moving lemmas, which means wh whenever you want to intersect two varieties, so um, the intersection will not always be in good position, so you have to move using this equivalent one cycle to get in good position and do the intersection. So that's the first uh, way to, do, uh, to put a product st structure. Or you use the deformation to the normal cone. So that goes back to Cho. It was also used by Bloch, Levin, this kind of thing. And here it's uh, the main the main construction in Fulton's approach. And um, also, in, a, in a, an approach I will use and explain due to uh, Marcus Rost. So, um, so, the main construction to do this uh, product is the Gizin map. So, if you fix f um, from y to x, it's a regular closed immersion. Then you can construct a pullback along F, which goes from the uh, show groups of X to the show groups of Y. So it's more or less intersecting with Y. But and the way Fulton uh, does the construction is as follows. So there are two steps. First, he used a, a, a deformation to the normal cone. And the geometric ID is uh, you replace your regular closed immersion by the uh, immersion of the zero section of a vector bundle. It's a geometric way to deform your regular immersion to the uh, embedding of the zero section. So it's much easier to deal with. So that's the deformation to the normal cone. To normal cone. But you, you are not. In, uh, in Y, you are over the, the normal bundle, and uh, what you do here is just you look at the pullback map, and it's an isomorphism by homotopy invariance, and so uh, you have a map, you have your Gizin map. 
And of course, the product is given, I mean, the intersection product. is obtained using the, if you take x smooth, then um, the diagonal embedding is a regular immersion, and you can construct the intersection product by pulling back along the, the diagonal. So you take that. But in all the construction, it works only uh, if you kill some uh, the algebraic, uh, rationally uh, equivalent to zero algebraic cycles. And there's another approach to uh, intersection theory, which is due to uh, Marcus Rost. So it's a generalization of um, classical intersection theory. Going back to the uh, to um, 96, and the idea is you can uh, describe your um, Cho groups as the co-kernel of the following map. So you look at um, so you look at irreducible vari varieties of codimension um, <coughs> p minus one. So x is the generic point, and you look at um, the multiplicative groups of your residue field at x, and you go to this, uh, to the, I mean, direct sum of the... Um, Could you write the subscript a little larger? Yes. Here? Yeah, it's not So you take all the points of codimension p minus 1, you take the residue field, but only the non-zero elements, and you have a map, which, which is a, the divisor of the function, which goes to the di direct sum of all points of codimension p, this time, of z. Uh, these are all your algebraic cycles, and you kill the image of this map, and this is ex exactly the show groups. The point that, uh, of the basic idea of Roth is that this map uh, belongs to a complex. So you have a whole complex, so a cycle complex. That's the, 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 the term you use. And for example, so you, you can look here, you start with all points of codimension zero, and you take, um, I will explain what these groups are, but Right now, I just write the complex. You take the Milner K groups, the P Milner K groups of the residue field. That's with the groups attached to any field. So you can look at this. Then you go back like this, and you arrive at the point of codimension exactly uh, P minus 1 here of your Milner K groups 1 of your residue field, so K1. That's exactly this term. And then you have the last one, which is the sum of all points of codimension P of the zero main K groups of the residue field. And this is exactly that. So you have a whole complex, and it happens that the zero homology of this complex is exactly your show group. So what Marcus Roth uh, wants to do is construct intersection theory for the whole complex, for the whole Gaston complex. And he does that. Uh, yes, uh, the differential is given by the, by the uh, residue map for Minor case theory. I will explain this. And uh, the good point of this approach is that you can almost all I mean, do everything at the level of complexes. So, if you uh, take this uh, case, you have a regular closed immersion, that's what uh, Roth uh, constructs. 
is a map, which is the given map. He wrote uh, IF for intersection. And it goes, so this complex, I will write it so, see, it's a cycle complex of X with coefficient in minor K theory. And you have some integer here, which is uh, P. And it can look, he has this, he can vary P here, he can put any integer, and he has a graded complex. And for this graded complex, he defines a pullback map from uh, X K M to C star of Y K M. Uh, and on the, uh, the right community groups, it, uh, it coincides with the map constructed by Fulton. And the point is here, it's really a map of complex. You don't have to pass to homotopy or quasi-isomorphism. It's really a map of complex. And uh, the, the fact that intersection is uh, associative is explained by the fact that when you, you take another closed immersion, you can compare the construction for the composition and the composition of the construction for each one. And you, you construct an homotopy between the two. So they are the same in the homotopy category. And the way you construct this, it's always, everything is defined at le the level of complexity. It's, it's really... Uh, and um, the way you construct this, it suggests the, faint, the, the, um, the following statement. So that's what I want to, to explain. Is, uh, so if you take X to be a smooth scheme, so a finite type of a K, and you look at this complex, and I mean, I can't prove the theorem with, uh, with integer coefficients, so I have to tensor with the rational coefficient, <coughs> tensor with Q then this complex has an a infinity algebra structure. And uh, I don't write it uh, on the blackboard, but the main point is that the multiplication the, is um, in, induced on the cohomology of the intersection product. So it's really... Uh, uh, a infinity algebra structure and on cohomology it induced the, um, the intersection product constructed by Rost and so the intersection product constructed by Susan. And uh, one, one consequence of this is that you have a higher multiplication operation on, on this uh, on show groups and things like this. So I will explain this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really good question. It's slightly different. It doesn't compute. I mean, blocks higher show groups, um, so to say. Um, I mean, th there's one. I mean, blocks higher show groups compute these uh, higher show groups, H P X Q, and these complexes only compute this one. So, but it computes also other things. For example, if you take the an irreducible scheme, and you take, I mean, you look at the cohomology here, in the, the, the uh, what you get is you look at the kernel, you take element in the, in the function field, the minor k groups of the function field, and you look at the elements that are, so that the residue are always zero. <coughs> so it computes different things, but at least for, for one cohomology group, it computes show groups. No, it's, it's slightly different. So uh, it, it computes the show groups, the usual okay. one, and it computes other things. So it's not the higher. No. So the resemblance to the mean cohomology is not accidental, right? Um, well, actually, there's uh, also, you can construct a infinity algebra on the link cohomology, and I mean, I had this in mind when I wrote this. I mean, I observed that the, what Rost did was, was this kind of thing, and you, you can really do this, but... But not the more. 
Yeah, that's the point. It's, it's slightly different. The regulator of mass. The So, it's, it's, it's a bit different. I mean, do you think A infinity is the best? Or, I mean, I would have expected E k for some k greater than 1. Because at the very least, it's good to have a condensive. But I don't know if it's off the top of my head. Or it's maybe, t uh, I mean, I, yeah. I've not checked whether it's, you can do this for commutativity well, or just. It's not checking, it's an actual property. Because then the higher, the higher operations. I have to check, yeah. but I I was just interested in associativity to check that it's really a, a infinity. But the fact that the cycle, the intersection is over to a commutative is sort of suggestive. Yeah. But I think that's the point. Yeah. 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 Yeah
tensor 1, tensor 1. So 1 is the identity plus 1 tensor m1, tensor 1, plus 1 tensor 1, tensor m1. So H star is, a, is an algebra. because of this relation here. That's true. Yeah, for yeah. open, close, for close, that's true. Uh -huh. But the sub thing does not have the same infinity multiplication on it. If you have y inside x and x is smooth. Uh, if if it's not smooth, I don't know. You don't know. It's a sub no. And um, so the point is, and and this one, there's a theorem. Uh, this one has also an infinity algebra structure. So the, the map M1 is zero, the map M2 is, uh, is uh, this M2 induced, and the others are what they are. Hmm? Yeah, that, that gives you, uh, if you look at uh, singular community, it gives you the massive product. And uh, a way to construct um, A infinity algebra is the following thing, the Bayesian theory. That the, the thing I used to construct the structure. So there's a theorem. And it goes back to, uh, I mean, there's a long list of people that prove the theorem back again using different methods. And, uh, so it's the first is uh, in the literature it's Guggenheim and there are um, lots of people later that prove them. So if you start with the following thing, so you start with two complexes, you have two maps of complexes, B, so I write it like this, um, strong deformation retract data. So it means that you have the following relation. You have R composed with alpha is the identity. Um, and the, the differential of alpha of H is 1 minus um, alpha composed with R. So the two complexes are uh, homotopic. Um, then, and plus a technical condition, but I mean, it's, it's not important because you can always modify your data so that the technical conditions are satisfied. So that's, let's put it so it's, it's not, not important. And you have, uh, and B is a DG algebra. So here you have your, your complex and you want to put an infinity algebra structure on this. But you know that on this you have a DG algebra. Then from this you can construct on, on A an A infinity algebra structure. <coughs> and so that these, these, all these maps lift to A infinity algebra morphism, the homotopy also. So the, the A infinity algebra will become homotopic to the DG algebra here. So, Minar K groups 
and intersection theory. So I just um, recall the main property of minimum shape theory. So it was introduced in um, 1969, so it's by Milner, and it was then uh, studied by Bath, Tate, Cato, and so the definition is really simple, although the groups are quite complicated. So K is a field, K is a field, any field. Then what you do is simply you take the multiplicative groups of your field, you take the tensor power, the nth tensor power, and you kill some relation called the Steinberg relation. And this one is simply the subgroup group generated by the, um, by the tensor uh, elements, so A1, AN, such that For some integer i and j, you have the following relation. a i plus a g is equal to 1. So that, these are relations. So you take the multiplicative group of your field, take the nth tensor power, and inside this you kill any tensor so that the sum of two elements here is 1. And uh, on this, so the image of this one is uh, written like this image in the Minarchic theory of A1 and the A1. And you have properties, just quickly. So the first one is the Zero group of K is simply the Z. K1 is exactly your um, multiplicative groups. And you have functoriality properties. So the first one is whenever you have an extension. So K is any field extension. You can pull back an element from the I mean the base field to the extension. Um, if the extension is finite, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. big K. Sorry. So you go from from the base field to the to the extension. That's really easy to define. You have an extension of the norm map for these, uh, these groups, which is really hard to define. So you have a norm map which goes from uh, the Milner K groups of the big field to the Milner K groups of the smaller field, and it's really hard to define. It's due to Cato. And uh, really, and you have, so you have a multiplication, graded commutative, which simply goes from, so if you take two elements, then you put together the, the tensor, simply this, k n plus m, k. And you have the last one. So if your field, if you take a field K, and you take on K, you take a discrete valuation. And uh, with residue field, little K, 
Then your valuation induce a residue map, which is uh, the analog of the residue map for cohomology theory, from, from the minor k groups of the fraction field to the minor k groups of the residue field, but you, you lower the indices by one. And this map is such that when you look at K1, uh, it's simply the valuation. So on K1, it's the, the valuation. On K1, is the valuation. V, K, C, Z. And you have, op uh, you have relation uh, between all these, uh, these operations. And from this, you can construct the cycle complex. So, um, so x over k is my scheme, when I type. So yeah, then you construct the complex C star X K uh, mina, and you have an extra grading by an integer, and you want to define what are the elements here, and it's just the direct sum of a whole point of codimension P of your the mina K groups N minus P of your residue field. You take this. So I just say that when you have one valuation, then you have a residue, but the residue depends on the valuation. So yeah, if you have more, yeah. So I mean, the, for each valuation, you have a residue, and uh, the, the point is, if you take an element here, it will have non-zero uh, image uh, only for a num finite number of variations. Yeah, that's the norm map. I, I, I write the differential right here to, to so. So the differential D, it has to go from C P X K mil nor N to C P X K mil nor um, P plus one. N. And what you do is the following. So it's, it's always a direct sum of a point. So you have only to define for two points. So here you have a point X, here you have a point Y. So you have two cases. First case. Y does not belong to the closure of X. So x is as co-dimension p, this one as co-dimension p, p plus 1. And in this case, um, you just take d x y to be 0. And the second case, y belongs to the closure of of x, and you do the following. So you take the closure of x, you normalize it here. So above y, you have a finite number of points. Yes. So you do the following. You have x, 
Take the closure. So it's an integral scheme. You take the normalization of this uh, the scheme. Your y belongs here. So above it, you have a finite number of points. D, D1, Dr. And um, I mean, because it's a normal scheme, to each of these points, you have a residue map. So you go from um, k minor of the residue field of x to, uh, so you have dz1, dzi, which goes there to there to the residue field of ci. But the point is now this uh, residue field is a finite extension of uh, ky. So you, you take the norm map, the trace, and you go there, ky, and you, take, so you sum all the maps that you get. And you can check that this is, this is really a complex. So you get a complex. No, you don't. You don't. You don't put sign there. Okay. okay. So that your cycle complex, and you have basic uh, operation. And the point of Rost approach is that they are all defined at the level of complex. It's everything is defined uh, level-wise at the level of, I mean, for complex. So you have flat pullbacks, pullbacks. That's the first uh, so-called basic map. Two, you have a proper push forward, proper push forward. Um, you have an extra map. Uh, if you take global section on your scheme, invertible global section on your scheme, then you can look at the image in the residue field of X, and you can multiply at each point X by the, the symbol A1X, a N X. And this is a map from C X K minor to C X X K minor. So you can multiply at each point by the, the I mean the image of your invertible section. So any global I mean any invertible global section or your scheme induce uh, maps on the on the cycle complex. And the last one, uh, but not the least, this is really important, is the, is the following map for, if you take a closed sub-scheme, so it's related to your question, uh, Lay, so it's, and you take U and open, which is the complement of Z, then what you have is a boundary map, which goes from the complex on, um, on U to the complex on D, and it's just defined uh, as the differential is. So now I just want to uh, explain this Gizin map of Roth and then uh, sketch the idea of the proof of the theorem, just uh, quickly. So, 3, 3, given map. So, so, I have y into x, a regular closed immersion. So you can look at the deformation to the normal cone of um, y into x. So it's a scheme that leads over x cross a1. 
I use the A1 version. You have also a P1 version, but I use the A1 version. Um, here, inside this, you can look at what lives above GM. It's always over K. And the uh, good point is that over GM, it's an isomorphism. So it's Cartesian, but that's an isomorphism. So you can think of X cross GM as embedded here. Then inside you have what leads over the zero section. So you have also a Cartesian square here, x, y over zero. And uh, the point is because the, the, uh, the, the closed immersion is regular, what you get is the normal bundle. And the point of uh, what uh, of uh, all this basic operation is that you have a description at the level of complex of the given map. And all of this is plus over A1, right? Yes. Um, so what Rost considers is the following. So you start with your cycle complex on X. So and here I can I have X here. Oh sorry. Yeah, I have S. So you take your cycle complex L here. So you can pull it back here because it's flat. So you can look at pullback to uh, X cross TM. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's me now. But then uh, you can you have a global invertible section, which is the, the coordinate here. On this scheme, you have a, your coordinate, which is a global invertible section. So you can multiply by the coordinate at the level of your cycle complex. So it's still here. And now, here it's an open. And the closed complement is this one. So you can look at the boundary map. And it will go through here. Oh, sorry. N, Y, X. And that's the analog of the specialization map of, uh, of Fulton. And the last one, so everything is defined in terms of the, of the uh, basic map. And the whole point of uh, what Rost uh, does also is that now you want to relate to this, but you have homotopy invariants, which means that you have here the flat pullback. And what Rost uh, does, he, he constructs here a retraction of this map. And the restriction is explicitly constructed in terms of basic maps. I don't do this. And uh, you have to fix a coordination, which is a more or less a trivialization of your normal bundle. But it means that at least, and you get this uh, IF, which is the composition of everything and your retraction. Yeah. And that's the, the uh, given map. Sorry? Uh, no, I mean the shift is, uh, is implemented in the, the way you define these complexes. Um, and so, I mean the main point is that when you construct the uh, retraction and you look at how we construct homotopies comparing this construction for various closed immersion, you observe, uh, I observe that the, the, the construction are more or less the same, always the same, it's kind of specialization map and then a normal top invariance. So you want to do this uh, to define IR multiplications that controls your Gizin map. It depends on the choice of the uh, that, That's really, I mean, in this construction, that's really a problem. So it's a technical problem that you have to get rid of. So um, the point, I will explain this now. I mean, how you, I mean, it depends on the choice. Uh, up to a it doesn't depend. Because, I mean, this map doesn't depend on any choice. And it's a retraction. But when you want to construct the infinity structures, then you have this problem that goes uh, really... Uh, when you do the computation, you have to get rid of and, and do things, I mean, almost the same way, but differently. You have to, to be careful with this thing. So I just want to sketch quickly the, the proof, how it works. And... Uh, okay.
So the, I mean, the idea is extremely simple. Okay, you want to construct uh, a infinity algebra structure on this one. So, so actually, what I, uh, what can do, that's, that's exactly how it will work. It uh, so with Q coefficient. <coughs> It constructs another complex I put a, a C um, so a curly C and this complex is built more or less out of these complexes but for, for the tangent bundle of, of X and you you explicitly construct so you have a pullback map which is more or less this pullback this kind of pullback map and you construct a retraction here plus an homotopy here so that will be a S here data so the point is to construct this strong deformation retract construct this one this one will be constructed in terms of these complexes but for the tangent bundle of X more or less you will have the pullbacks and the retraction will be constructed using the same kind of idea that Ross used for this retraction. But you put it in one. So you put it here. You have a retraction. And of course the retraction will, will depend on the uh, trivialization of the tangent bound up to homotopy. So it means that the A infinity algebra structure, you, you have different uh, a priori for different trivialization, but you, you can compare them. So you construct this, and then, so that's the first step, and the second step, Sorry, yes, Sorry? yes, so you have, a, uh, you have your cycle complex on X, and you construct a modification of this cycle complex, which I denote by curly of X. So here yeah, I don't, I drop Q, it's, it's a part in the definition, it's as Q coefficient. If you want, I can put Q, but... The point is that I, I have to take the invariance and the uh, action of groups. And uh, I have to take Q coefficient to do this. For this one. Yeah. So it's as Q coefficient even to, to define it. So you have, so the first step is to construct these, and the second step is to construct a DG algebra structure on this one. And it's quite long, I mean you have to do computation to check that everything works. And. Um, just to give an idea of how this, uh, this thing is defined, I mean, it's, I mean, the it's structure is not commutative. I don't know. I mean, I didn't check this kind of thing, so probably it is. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to to say something is true when I I'm not sure it is. <laughs> Or well, at least I'm not convinced it is. So, um, so I mean, the, it's not the way the proof works exactly, but the idea is the, is the following thing: the A infinity algebra structure comes from the fact that you, if you if you take n copies of your complex, what you you have is you can look at values uh, so uh, embedding along the diagonals, and you can deform all of them more or less. And then you can look in this old space of deformation of the, so to say, deformation of one of them and so on. I mean, you have a, a geometric picture. And the whole point uh, is the specialization map here. If you don't apply the retraction for the diagonal embedding, you land in the tangent bundle. 
and I keep doing specialization map. So it means that I never land on, on X, I have always land in some tangent bundle or higher things like this. And I do the retraction at the end. So to, um, just to define the thing, just conclude. So you have x, you take a vector bundle on x, you take this one is simply x cross x e cross x. It's always the final product of the x. And you have n copies. So on this you have the symmetry groups that act. And what you do is the following. You take the cycle complex of this bundle. But you uh, take the invariant under the symmetry group. So that's your C, X, K, M, star, N. And it's an inductive system as n grows bigger, and you take uh, your c star x of, um, of km with respect to this bundle to be the homotopy collimit co of these complexes. And it's just a mapping code. I mean, it's really a, a, a simple definition, you take all these complexes, x, n, and you look at the mapping cone of the map um, identity minus the shifting, because you have always mapped from a c star n to c star n plus 1, and you take this one, c star x, and take direction n. And the homotopy collimit, this mapping cone is really useful. I mean, I can't do this on the, the collimit. I have to, to, to give me as, as much freedom as this. And so, I mean, the SDA data works for any vector bundle. And for the second part of the CRM, I have to take E to be the tangent bundle. And then I, I, everything is constructed in terms of, the, of this four basic map. So I think it's about here.